welcome everybody <laughs> welcome to fintech circle normally i'm behind the scenes a lot and and not delivering the front end so um i believe that this is working perfectly so i'm gonna i'm gonna take you through so welcome to our webinar grow your fintech with linkedin it's our linkedin masterclass uh, um and uh our goal today what's our goal i like this our goal is shut up and take my money we want to get to a place whereby you with linkedin and your business um come to a place whereby your ideal customer is literally going oh my god where have you been all my life and linkedin is a fantastic vehicle to achieve that goal within the webinar that we're now doing uh our goal will be to get you 10 new clients in the next 90 days um i'm going to teach the number one mistake everyone makes on linkedin uh we're going to learn what linkedin really is and what it isn't um how to craft a profile to convert visitors into buyers vitally important and how to find decision makers on linkedin uh we're going to discover the secret to getting your messages read and the common mistakes and pitfalls that rookies make killing possible sales we don't want to make those mistakes and a lot of people are and i'm going to share a whole bunch of templates success formulas plus a whole lot more and there's a very special offer at the end um which is what i'm coming to now bonus and freebies um for those of you that do stay to the very end there's going to be a bonus i'm going to share a downloadable link to all the templates and cheat sheets that i'll be sharing um that are in included in today's presentation uh plus a little bonus from fintech circle so do make sure you stay until the end okay um i didn't have time to do a graphic so it's just a little graphic of me it looks like i needed a haircut in those days by the sure but we're going to be sharing those with you okay so i just want to share a couple of linkedin success stories just to whet your appetite about what's about to be taught simply for the fact that it works every time and if you follow the formula that i'm going to teach today you will always get the same sort of results so I can take somebody like businessmobiles.com. I mean, this is years ago. I remember we, we don't even know how much we made them. But um, when we worked it out nine years ago, it was 44.7 million um, with, with the help of LinkedIn and social selling. We're generating about a thousand leads a month for businessmobiles.com. If you're in the UK, you've probably heard of them. Obviously, FinTech Circle ourselves, we've got a FinTech Circle LinkedIn group um of over 40,000 and and Suzanne Chisty's own following is 35,000 and fintech circle the company itself is on 28,000 plus um our entire reach across social is something like 216,000 plus um the reason that's important <laughs> is certainly like something with the like the LinkedIn group the fintech circle LinkedIn group we're able to push out to that audience of fintech professionals, neobanks, startups, and things like this. So building groups on, on LinkedIn is certainly something we're going to look at. Um, and this one's a bit left of field, but I like sharing it because it's so important when it comes to the story we're telling. Um, European bar school, world's largest bar school, you know, like Tom Cruise and in, 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 in uh, Cocktail. Um, and uh, just by changing the story, because we're going to get into storytelling a little bit later, just by changing the story, we we're able to double their profits from, they were already doing well, 1.2 million to 2.4 in nine months, just with a simple tweak. I'm going to be showing you this a little bit later. But before we really kick in, just a little bit of housekeeping, because uh, we know how this always works. If you can, because even I, my phone is pinging in the side there. If you could turn off your phone, because um, you've, made the time now to dedicate the time to this webinar and other people we know we know what it's like life gets in the way so other people are going to be pinging you the phone's going to ring and things like that but if you actually just turn it off nobody can disturb you and you can focus in the time so do put it at least put it on silent um the next thing is grab a pen and paper and i want you to take notes and and the reason for that is if you're just sitting here just watching or listening you'll absorb you know 40% of, of it and be able to recall it in a week's time. But if you actually write down, and it's that mind-body connection, if you actually take notes, write things down, you'll retain more of the information. So please grab, take a moment, grab a pen and paper, take notes. And, uh, and the third thing is, I would like you to make a commitment. 
yeah, you're investing the time right now to, to watch this webinar. Um, and what I want you to do is commit to taking action on what you're going to learn. Even if it's not all of it, even if it was just one thing, I want you to say to yourself right now, I'm going to take action on this. I, one thing alone, I will take action on. Make that commitment. All right. OK, so without further ado, um, grow your fintech on LinkedIn with Glenn Burgess. So just a little bit about me. So you um, know that I know what I'm talking about. Uh, probably <laughs> I had to always share this one. Um, claim to fame is basically we were building one of the biggest online communities back in 1998, 1999, sort of the beginning of the web. It was before LinkedIn and things like this. Um, and, uh, you know, to be honest, I ended up 100 grand in debt. It was a big, big project. We, we had a, a building there in what is now Silicon Roundabout. We had a big building, Utopia House, back in 98, 99. Um, this is the early days of web, before freemium. And, and long story short, um, my only claim to fame for that 100 grand debt that I ended up into <laughs> is that all my friends are like, oh, this guy should have been Zuckerberg. He should have been Zuckerberg. So this screenshot here, look, this is Facebook in 2004, six years later, on the right-hand side, uh, some really nice designs. Utopia was awesome. But uh, don't feel sorry for me. Uh, because yes, I was a hundred grand in debt at the end of that period, but that set me off uh, to learn all about internet marketing. Because in those days, 1998, internet marketing didn't really exist. You had search engine optimization, but there was no Google AdWords, there was no Twitter, there was no LinkedIn. Um, I mean, e even Google wasn't a thing. The search engine we were using was something called Cornucopius. So we're going right back in the day. But um, since then, uh, I'm the founder of Power New Media, which is a fintech focused marketing agency um, for my sins. And uh, I'm also CMO and head of partnerships at Fintech Circle because um, we, we'll get into that a little bit later. But I've been teaching LinkedIn marketing strategy and tactics since about 2011. Um, as I say, we've got some really big clients, business mobiles, uh, shelter. We doubled their base, uh, doubled their base in two years. Uh, and they'll roll me out at NatWest Bank or Google Startups or Google Campus and obviously everything at Fintech Circle. So just a lot of experience. A little bit about Fintech Circle before we crack on. Um, it is the UK's, if not the world's number one fintech community. It's probably why you're here and how you found us. Um, it really consists of three circles, uh, if you can see my cursor. It began life really connecting investors, people who want to invest, VCs, etc., angels, with innovative fintechs. It was all about raising fund and bringing those two parties together. Then we began writing books. We've got up to we've got six books. Suzanne Chisty, the founder of Fintech Circles, famous for fintech for dummies. If you know those yellow and black books, and uh, we've got the corporate network partners we did it just at our if you were there we just did our autumn drinks at deloitte's deloitte's is a partner of fintech circle um and then the outer ring as i say is the reach of the 216,000, so 40,000 on our linkedin group etc cetera, etc cetera. so um uh, very cheap very i shouldn't say cheap good value to join fintech circle if you're looking to target fintechs it's certainly the place to be so as i say we do the books there's all our books there's fintech for dummies suzanne Chisty um we hold webinars much like this one this is a really a members webinar it's been open to the public as well um we hold educational webinars uh, raising awareness about fintech and, and the solutions um or the opportunities that are there um obviously uh, through our blog through the webinars there's fintech insights etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and we organize roundtables or VIP dinners where we bring together all the, the players, um, you know, to educate people on fintech. And just recently, uh, our most recent um, thought leadership piece was the data usage barometer, which we did in, in conjunction with uh, Bulk. Uh, so we surveyed all our members and that survey is live at what the survey's done. And the actual report is just is, is live and you can potentially download that. I'll follow up some of you if you, anybody's interested in data usage and making the world a better place through clean, green, zero emissions, etc. Um, and, and finally, you know, and we do films, fintech films. So um, we've done three already. Future for Fintech, Responsible Fintech was the second. Uh, and launching live at um, Fintech Connect in 
30th of November, 1st of December, is uh, FinTech for Good, which we have done in partnership with ITN and ITN Business, um, in which we're raising awareness about social inclusion and the role that FinTech has to play and again, in making in, in making the world a better place from um, financial inclusion to sustainability issues and everything else. So if you're not already coming to FinTech Connect, uh, I highly recommend that you do because our film will be premiering live there. So anyway, that's enough about FinTech Circle with Suzanne, obviously, in the centre. OK, so without further ado, right, how to grow your FinTech with LinkedIn. OK, so. I've divided the webinar into three sections uh, because it's actually quite a big thing. Um, and over the weekend, actually, I decided we're going to do a part one and a part two. So you're not going to get everything today. But that's only because I'm going to deliver so much value in part one and then even more value in part two. But the webinar is today is divided up into three sections. So we it's the planning part because I give you a whole bunch of tactics for LinkedIn but it's all going to fall flat. It's going to be like, wah, 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 if you haven't put the correct foundations in place. So it, I'm going to take you through the foundations today, especially, and then move more into the tactics and stuff in webinar two. Um, uh, so planning, connecting, and then obviously profiting. So a little bit about LinkedIn, and I'm not going to bore you with the LinkedIn sets. We all know it's a great place to be. So, but there are over three, sorry, over 830 million users on LinkedIn. It's basically Facebook for business. And people, what's wonderful about LinkedIn is the people who are there are there to do business. Decision makers are there. You can literally reach anybody you want on LinkedIn, um, which is awesome. Um, you know, it launched in 2003 as I say, five years after my utopia, but um, it's grown into the largest professional social network. And what's interesting is Facebook's actually going up and up and up. Things like, um, sorry, did I say Facebook? LinkedIn is going up and up and up. There's actually more usage, more people joining compared to Facebook, which is sort of going down and down, which is quite interesting um, because they're bringing in more and more um, tools that allow us to, to, to utilize it uh, far better. Um, it really started off life as a CV, li a CV library and a way to find jobs. And that's one of the challenges because that's how it started life and that's how people started using it. So which leads us into the first learning, the first aha. And it's the first mistake that people make. Yeah, we're in the plan section here. So here's mistake number one. People on, on LinkedIn, they go and create a profile and they, they, they think, and rightly so, of course, it's all about me. This is me. This is Glenn. This is who, what Glenn is, what Glenn does. This is my profile, my CV on LinkedIn. And that's the biggest mistake you can make. It's it's dropping the ball before you ever begin. Um, you see, your LinkedIn profile, it's not all about you. It's not about you at all. Not if you want to be successful anyway. What it's really about, your profile is about the viewer. Your profile is about your ideal customer or the person you want to attract who is looking at your profile. Does that make sense? Uh, maybe in the chat, if you need the, on the right hand side there, you can see sort of chats and polls. If you can uh, just go, hey, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes, yeah. Your profile is not about you as much it is, as it is about who you're trying to target and what's in it for them. Does that make sense? Yes. So because of that fact it makes me have to go back into the foundations because like i say i can give you a bunch of tactics all the stuff to do on linkedin but it's all going to fall on deaf ears if your profile's not optimized for your target audience so back to the beginning so okay so like i say at natwest bank or google they roll me out on stage and i do a little talk it's the ultimate success formula for marketing and so they have a metaphor that i'm always using well known for it um it's basically it goes like this the best book of marketing I ever read is called The Gorillas Want Bananas. The Gorillas Want Bananas. Look, don't go out and buy it. I'll save you 12 hours of reading. The big takeaway here is literally you don't have to sell a banana to a gorilla. 
The gorillas want bananas. The whole act of marketing, the whole act of sa sales, even though we don't sell, we don't, I don't believe in marketing, don't believe in selling. The whole, but the whole act of marketing is to present a banana to a gorilla. So, because gorilla, this, this is the takeaway from the book, gorillas want bananas. It's the easiest thing in the world. Marketing is the easiest thing in the world. Sales is the easiest thing in the world, so long as you're not selling. Because here's the reality. Nobody likes to be sold to. Nobody likes a salesman. You know, I'm walking in the store, Levi's, whatever. Can I help you? No, no, I'm just looking. We get afraid because we, we feel because they're, they're trying to sell us something. So when I say I don't believe in selling, what I'm, what I'm really talking about is if we do our job correctly, we're presenting the, the perfect offer to the ideal client. And they basically go, oh, my God, where have you been in my life? So there's no selling. There's no marketing involved. So really, I mean, in the middle there is just the sales funnel. But at the top of the funnel is the gorilla. Remember, gorillas want bananas. The banana is at the bottom. Uh, so who's the gorilla? Who's the gorilla? The gorilla, as it says there, who's the gorilla? The gorilla is the psychographic profile of your ideal client. Most businesses, they just, they just haven't sat down and spent the time to really deep, deep dive. And this is where the magic is. That's why even though we're talking about you and LinkedIn and your LinkedIn profile, the magic is actually knowing who you're talking to and what's in it for them. Yeah. So the gorilla, gorillas want bananas. The gorilla is the psychographic profile of your ideal, of your ideal client. Um, as an agency power many years ago, we were very, very busy. So many customers. Yeah, yeah. We, we wouldn't be good at marketing if we, if we did it. Um, but we were busy not making any money. We were busy not making any money because we didn't have the right customers at that stage. This is before I'd moved into fintech. Um, yeah, no, no. We, anybody who wanted customers, that was a good customer for us. Uh, we were very, very busy with lots of clients not making as much money as we should be. So I want to say this is the psychographic profile, worth writing this down, of your ideal client. Yeah. Now, you've probably heard of a demographic, 18 to 30 year old male lives in London, blah, blah. Demographics are useful, but a psychographic is, is awesome. Um, it, it's basically where I spend most of my time with any client. Um, cause you need to know who you're talking to. So a psychographic is, this is what they're thinking. This is what they're feeling. These are their worries, their concerns. These are their hopes, their dreams. This is what wakes them up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. It's all of these things. It actually looks like this. This is actually a, a psychographic profile. And I just talk you through it just, just gently. In the middle is demographic type stuff, which is useful for targeting, but they always have a, your ideal client has a before state. You know, they've, they've got a pain. If somebody's going to buy or exchange money for your product, they have a before state. They have a problem. There's either, there's either a problem they want to avoid or there's a future they want to gain. Does that make sense? So there's always a before state and an after state. So it's a before state, right? There. Um, down here. Um, and this is the, the, the great stuff. Basically, you know, what are they frustrated with? What are they worried about? What are their fears? What are they? You need to lock all this stuff down. So just out of curiosity, I'm going to stop sharing for one second so I can sort of see the thing. Because if we could show the first poll, um, just out of curiosity, question one. Uh, forgive me, everybody. Forgive me, forgive me. Oh, there it is there. How many of you are already using sales now? Okay, <laughs> really? That's a later question, that one. Uh, I'm going to put do it later. I can see. I was just, oh, hi from Berlin. Sorry, it's the first time I'm actually seeing the chat. Sorry, sorry, everybody. Hi from Berlin. Hi, happy to connect. Hi, hi, everybody. Yeah, lots of, lots of chats and everything else. But um, if we could just post the question, um, how many of you feel that you, you you've got your your customers psyche locked down you know them inside out you, you know you've spent so much time with them yep there we go it's popped up on screen now if you want to have a vote you know is your psychographic spot on you you know it inside out you kind of vaguely know who they are and what they're thinking what do you think you could do with some work or you go 
hey, actually, I didn't even, I've never even heard of psychographic profiling. I know what demographics are, but psychographic, what? Um, so if you could fill that in, that would be cool. Um, and we'll sort of see it's also appeared on my screen. Um, so I'm just looking at the stats so far. So yeah, like, yeah, uh, a, a few people are interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So, so it kind of, a bit of a mix there. I see a bit of a mix. Okay. So we'll go, let's go straight back in. I just was just curious. It's always good to know. Okay, so I'm back in sharing again. I don't know if any, everybody could see my screen just then, but okay. So moving on from the psychographic profile, and this is a unique value proposition. This is the banana because it's very, very important that we're communicating effectively. I don't care if you're a fintech, a law firm, a coding school, a bar school. You're selling mobile phones. It doesn't matter. Any industry, the killer question is always, yeah, but why you? So this, what we're looking at here is a communications wheel. It's really the banana. It's what we're communicating. But at its core, this is why you are the only choice in the marketplace. We lock that down. Uh, this next ring that you see, what we are, this is what you want people to say about you having worked with you. Or it's what they say about you when you're not in the room. So if this was Disney's wheel, let's say it's Disney's, it might say something like far, uh, safe, safe family fun for Disney. Safe family fun. When I say it's a Disney movie, you think something. Or, you know, if it was, or, or maybe the, the holiday of a lifetime or memories that last forever. Um, but if this was Harvard, it might say something, a success guarantee or the best Ivy League school in America. I don't know. Um, this next ring out is really important because... Where you see what we do, I want you to think what we give, because this is the bedrock of all of your marketing comms. This bit is sort of the end result of what it's, it's what lives in the brain of the consumer. It's, it's what underpins all the PR and everything else. But what we do is kind of the sort of message you go out with. But wherever you see do, I want you to think give what we give. So uh, I'll use power as, as, as a good example on this. You know, many, many years ago when we were. At one point, we were an SEO agency. Um, we, we would say, we're SEO experts. And there's an exercise you go through. You go, so what? Well, we'll get you to number one in Google. So what? Well, if you're number one in Google, they'll find you instead of your competitors. So what? And there's this process called the so what? And you go, so what? So what? So what? So what? So what? And you get and deep, deep down is the gold. Because, you know, forget what you do. Think what we give. So watch. Nobody wants an SEO expert. Nobody even wants to be number one in Google. What they really want is a stampede of new customers or to put your marketing on autopilot and never have to think about it again and never have to pay for every click. Does it make sense? What, what, what people really want is customers. They don't want an SEO expert. They don't even want to be number one in Google. And this outer ring is sort of uh, how we behave, look and feel, voice and tone, et cetera. But basically, all of that is the banana. So I'm sharing all of that with you um, just simply because there's no point us going through and doing all this stuff on LinkedIn if we don't know who we're targeting, we don't know what we're saying to them, and we haven't sort of mapped all of this out. That's why phase one is the planning bit. You know, perhaps you've got it all in place. That'd be awesome. Perhaps you don't. But it's it's important for me to express this. Because I don't know if you know the failure rates for startups, but they're horrendous. You know, we live in startup land. Um, the failure rates are astronomical, not, not if they're working with us, but because I mean, that ne will never happen. But, um, you know, when marketing is so easy and gorillas want bananas and it's such a it's a, it's a doddle. Um, why do so many uh, businesses fail then? Why do so many startups fail? And the reason is this, metaphorically speaking, they go out to market, they're running around the Serengeti with a ham sandwich, chasing giraffes and gazelles and baboons, wondering why, what, what, what's the buying? What, uh, uh, go to these shows, I present, uh, what's happening? They're running around the Serengeti with a ham sandwich, chasing giraffes and gazelles and baboons, wondering why, why it's not working. 
Whereas when we know we're after gorillas, the psychographic profile of ideal client, we've locked that all down. We know we can communicate in gorilla language. Metaphorically speaking, we're straight off to Uganda, up to that mountain, you know, Diane Fossey, Gorillas in the Mist. I'm showing my age here. It's a movie from the 80s. You know, up to the biggest silverback. And you go, hey, silverback, you want a banana? Of course, poof, rips it out of your hand. So, yeah. So the reason most businesses fail is that great saying, isn't it? People don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. So the thing that I see time and time and time again is just this lack of sitting down, spending the time to work out the psychographic profiles of your ideal clients and actually having an actual communications wheel. They sort of go, go to market with one of these, you know, an empty wheel where they don't even know why, you know, can't even answer the question why you're the only choice in the marketplace. It's very, very important. Why? Because. This is your ideal client. They're just thinking, they're just sitting there and they need to hear it fast, right? They're just going, they're just thinking, um, there's a great saying, um, because it's the way the brain works. Even you just listening to me now, you're burning calories. Your, your brain, what it does is we're bombarded by something like 4,000 or 40,000 marketing messages a day as we, as, we, as we go through the tube, television, phone, WhatsApp. The brain's become really, really adapt at blocking stuff out like if i open my linkedin i'm going to see like 90 miss 90 requests every other one is hey we're an account you know can, can we do appointment setting for you i get targeted a lot with that because we're a marketing agency um um but the brain has become very adept at sort of just shutting out all this information um and just going does the information i'm about to hear and it happens fast does this help me survive or thrive? How does this help me survive or thrive? Another way of saying it, is this for me? You know, quite closely followed by, why should I care? You know, which is, does, is this going to help me survive or thrive? You know, um, uh, they're thinking about the outcome they want, their desired end result or the transformation. You know, let's say, you know, I've, I, I, I've got a nine month runway. I need to close more sales. You know, I've got my series B coming up, whatever. I've got to prove numbers. Um, I've got to hit those, those targets. Um, th that's what that's what they'll be thinking about. How does this information help me hit 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 that target? How does it, yeah. Um, they'll be looking for your solution. Hopefully you've got a solution, this unique mechanism. We always talk about unique. You've you hopefully you've got a unique mechanism for delivering the result, the outcome, solving their pain. I have to speak in sort of vague, slightly vague terms, but just remember this. We are always selling the medicine. You can write that one down. We are always selling the medicine. Somebody has a pain and they want to solve it. You know, I remember a, a fintech we had fintech for at Fintech Circle. Um, really great one. Can't think of the name in a second, but um helped with subscriptions, monthly subscriptions, being on top of all your monthly subscriptions. I, I'm probably wasting a fortune on things that just roll over that I, I don't have a, a clear eye on. And I just remember when they were pitching, it was like, man, that, that that's solving my pain. You, <laughs> this gorilla want that banana. It's that simple. Um, um, yeah. So so they're thinking, you know, what what's the solution to my problem? Uh, the next thing they'll be thinking is, I need some proof. How do I know this works? You know, how do I know this works? Where's the proof of results? Because especially on LinkedIn as well, you know, something we learn as children, stranger danger, stranger danger. Got all these people pitching me. In order for me to even give somebody the time of day, I need to, I need to generally know them, like them in order to trust them. I need to know, like, and trust them. Stranger comes up, connects, starts pitching me. I don't know you from Adam. Um, and, and you're just pitching me. You're just trying to sell me. I'm, just, I'm obviously just a number. And that's the trouble with LinkedIn. Um, it used to be awesome. You know, 2011, 2012. What, what a gold mine. <laughs> it's still awesome. But there's so much noise now. That's one of the challenges we have. There's so much noise. So that's why this planning aspect of it, is so important because you only get one you really get one shot you get one shot um although i will also teach you that the fortune is in the follow-up and tenacity but 
I, I need to say this about your business. Your business, as much as you love it and you think you're awesome and everything else, and I think Powell's awesome, and I think Fintech Circle is awesome, but really any business is just a vehicle to take somebody from that before state now to the transformation they wish to occur or that after state. Does it make sense? So before state, oh, I don't know where my next lead is coming from. You know, after state, I've got the systemized auto thing running on autopilot and I've got more leads than I know what to do with, you know, um, or I've got this headache. Um, actually, I'll, I'll tell it just really, really quickly. I go to a lot of fintech events. Obviously, we do the stage with a big dragon's den thing at London Fintech Week. We go to all the events. So I, I, I meet a lot of fintech salespeople, a lot. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll really feed them the question and I'll sort of object. So, 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 yeah, what's the challenge your customers are trying to overcome? What's, what's the pain you're solving? Sell me the medicine. I'll, 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 I'll give them so much time of day. It's unbelievable. And they still, what I, my, my metaphor for it would be, um, they're too busy because they're obsessed with their product. They're too busy talking about the plumbing, how it works. I don't know. It's like me talking about SEO, like heading one tags, alt tags. Whatever. They're, they're too busy talking about the plumbing when really the customer wants the end solution, which is a glass of water. I think it's a nice metaphor. Customers thirsty, they want a glass of water. What I see so often with fintech salespeople um, who are trying to pitch and, and explain what they do, they're too busy talking about the plumbing rather than saying, you know how somebody's thirsty and they really want a glass of water? <laughs> Does it make sense? Uh, give me a show of hands in, in, in the chat if you can. In the, if you can, it's nice to get some feedback. Um, I was going to say, on that note, um, if we could just raise the poll question, um, poll three really which is how many of you feel that your messaging is spot on like you've got it locked down your sales people are out there they're nailing it they're going to these events they're just bang that's what we do just like that you know oh, i'm going to give you a formula for this a little bit later so i've got to be very conscious of time so we're about halfway now um uh if we could just have a um a, a, yeah so if that poll is up and we can present the results That's awesome. Okay, so again, a, a mixed bag, a mixed bag. Um, so as I, as I move forward, so yeah, so so remember I was saying just before I sort of preempted a little bit. Your your business, your your unique value proposition. You know, this is who we are and who we do it for. Um, it's basically a vehicle to get somebody from one side to the other to to bridge that gap. Sometimes you talk about story gap. We're bridging the gap, and the story is what bridges that gap. Um, if you do have any challenges with this, the sort of stuff we do day in, day out for um, it's channel capital at the bottom there in the middle. Um, we do it a lot. So always happy to help. But although this is a fin uh, this is obviously a LinkedIn webinar, we're about to get right into LinkedIn. It's as I say, it's LinkedIn is really just part. It's just a channel. It's just a delivery mechanism. It's a delivery mechanism of a message. That's why I'm spending so much time to tell you. You need to lock down your foundations first because um, uh, racing off on LinkedIn um, isn't going to solve all your problems. It's just a channel. Yeah. It, it's having those foundations locked down, knowing exactly who you're after, knowing exactly why you are the perfect solution for them is what's important. And then LinkedIn is just an amazing place to go and find them. So if I stick with that gorilla metaphor, uh, in the early days, when when as an agency we sort of shifted or, or, or sort of moved our focus more into the fintech land, um, of course, so fintechs being the gorilla, uh, an organisation like Fintech Circle made complete sense to connect with Fintech Circle because it's the community for gorillas. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. Um, and, and that's why our FinTech Circle LinkedIn group with its 40,000 members, people are joining, you know, we, we pick and choose who we allow in, but um, people are joining it, you know, rightly so. They're going, oh, if I want to target FinTechs, where are all the FinTechs hanging out? What's what's the largest FinTech community on LinkedIn? Oh, it's FinTech Circle. 
and and so they apply to join i'm talking about the the linkedin group not not the actual proper membership of fintech so yes yeah, so i just want you to know that um linkedin is just just a delivery mechanism of a message but it's a fantastic place to go and target our audience. So everybody, without further ado, should we get right in here and let's start making some changes? Right, so starting with your LinkedIn profile. Um, two components at the top I really, really want to talk about. Okay, so the first is literally your banner space, your banner space. Um, it's a giant bit of real estate, which is basically just like advertising space. So why wouldn't you get in there and put a lovely, juicy, big message? So this happens to me my when I, I'm changing mine out all the time, depending on what I'm focused on at the time. Um, so at the moment, what does it say? Fill your pipeline in 90 days. Fintech marketing made easy. How new media or, or equal, just as equally fintech circle. Um, this is my personal profile, this one. Um, now, so, so that's the banner. Yeah. Um, now, here's the good news. Who's on Canva? Show of hands in the chat. Where we go? There you go. Oh, it's coming through already. Um, Canva is awesome. We love Canva. I would hate to be a graphic designer these days because that, that, that bit of software is just putting them out of business. So, number one, I want you to go and create an awesome header and add that to your profile. Um, just go to Canva, join Canva, it's cheap as chips, um, and go in there and you'll search LinkedIn headers, LinkedIn headers, and uh, you'll, you'll come across a whole bunch of awesome ones here. Just just scroll through, uh, there's hundreds of them. So find something that, that suits you, and then just get in there and edit it. So it's tip number one. Use Canva for all your graphic design stuff, especially on social, yeah? And they've got a whole range of LinkedIn headers, already the perfect sizes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the next thing, uh, so, it, it, you know, when I said earlier, I want you to commit to one thing. At the very least, please commit to that. Just at the very least, just go in there, go to, go to your profile, go edit profile, click on that little pencil icon. It'll ask you to upload a photo. You would have already just, created it on Canva, downloaded it, just upload it. It would be already the perfect size. Stick it in there. Already now, when somebody comes to your profile, they're going to read this big headline, which is far more effective than, than this bit, which is the number two. Number two is your LinkedIn profile headline. So, I mean, you'll see this a thousand million times. And even I was guilty of it in the early days, um, 2010, stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, what would my profile here to say? Glenn Burgess, CEO, co-founder and CEO of Power New Media. Here's the thing. Does my customer care? Do they care about Power? Do they care I'm CEO? I'm not going to talk about LinkedIn SEO at this stage at all. But really, your LinkedIn headline shouldn't really be about, you know, see, um, Glenn, CEO of Power New Media. What it should they should do is speak to your target audience speak to your target audience ideally it should say something like i help x so that they dramatic result um in whatever time frame so they it's sort of end result i'll give you a template for all this stuff don't worry but um so mine's not perfect here at the moment. What have I had? What, let's have a look. What have I chosen to do? I'm slapping this in today. Um, so anyway, but I am going, I help fintech startups. Okay, there you go. Who am I talking to? Who's my gorilla? Fintech startups and neobanks, actually, but gets a bit long. Um, I help fintech startups leverage LinkedIn. There you go. In order to double their sales conversions in 90 days or less in result. You want to double your, double your sales? And that's what we do. You know, that's why I'm showing you those, that proof in the very beginning. Um, uh, you know, what am I? I'm a CRO and marketing coach. Now, if you, and now if whoever was reading this didn't know what CRO, CRO stood for, that's okay. That's okay. Because if you don't know what um, conversion rate optimization is, you're probably not my ideal client. However, having said that, now you know that 
uh, conversion rate optimization is a thing. <laughs> it's a really important thing if you're doing internet marketing. And so it's really just known as CRO, just because conversion rate optimization is a bit long. Yeah. So uh, I think you should say UK's leading CRO in marketing. But anyway, founder of Power, Power Marketing and PR Branding Agency. But the point I want to I want to get at here is the point that it's saying I help X to achieve Y within some sort of specific, you know, you probably heard of SMART goals. Yeah. Uh, you want to make it as specific as possible. So yes. So again, commitment to if your profile currently says I'm the CEO and founder, um, I would immediately um, go through and start thinking about who my target audience is and what I help them to achieve. Yeah. What I help them to achieve and what's the transformation that occurs. So that's your LinkedIn uh, headline. Yeah, you can still put in all these search phrases through tags. You know, if somebody wants to find me, they can find me through that. Um, right. Okay. On to sent time check. That's the trouble. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Okay. Right. LinkedIn profile photo. Okay. I'm going to start with what not to do. See over here. See that screen. See these people here? Where it's like a mid shot. Um, the secret. This isn't a perfect one, but I, it's just, just a good one when I went looking just before. Um, uh, the secret to your LinkedIn profile, and you don't have to spend a fortune, get a professional headshot and all that. It's okay. You can just do it with an iPhone. But the secret is, it, it should be your face. I'm being all sultry. I should be smiling, but <laughs> looking over my shoulder. Hey. Um, no, but the, the, the concept here is it's all eyes and teeth, and it should be zoomed right in. Even this could be zoomed in more because this is where it sort of appears. It appears in searches. It appears... Like these ones where it's, you know, a mid shot. Can you see his face? How connected do you feel to these guys? And that's what a lot of people, you know, 50, 60 percent of people are doing. Even these. You want to get right in there, right in there as close as possible. And the rule is all smiles, teeth, all smiles and eyes. Yeah. Um, so smiling, happy person, because that's what we see. It's your profile photo. Again, this person here, unfortunately. Just wasting the opportunity to give me a big headline. But I'm just using this one to say, because yeah, I sort of saw those dod dodgy ones. That's okay. Good enough. Like I said, I would still tighten that a little bit closer. Uh, she's probably not smiling at teeth because a bit like me, I'm not, not the biggest fan of my smile with teeth. <laughs> but yeah, so, so just a quick recap on those three things. So I will step back, actually. I don't see no harm in that. So sort out your headline. Remember Canva, C A canva com super cheap so uh, go in there do your banner get your messaging up there and again that's why i sort of had to go back to fundamentals because you don't know what your fundamentals are how are you going to write an awesome headline but anyway um uh and then because again look, look at this look, here's her headline just by the by i'm using it for the photo not for the headline banking and fintech advisory at ncr how inspired i hope she's not on the school <laughs> but how inspired are we all by that doesn't tell me anything right yeah the next thing 15 minutes left uh the next thing is actually your about section so a lot of people again because of the way that linkedin uh started life um you know tended hi i'm glenn burgess i used to be assistant manager for at westpac in, in new zealand and i used to do this and i used to do that and blah 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 and and literally like here's here's my resume it's an online CV because that's how it began life. And a lot of people's, unfortunately, their about us section, which one of the best sections, still looks like that. So I can't screenshot the whole thing. But so I just showed you a little bit of mine. So a great way to do it. Oh, I'm going to step back. There was a reason I was teaching gorillas want bananas too. So watch. There's only three types of ad you can ever write advertising. Yeah. Um, and, and that looks like this, you know, three types of ad. First type, are you a hungry gorilla? That's one type, you know, um, an example. You know, do your teeth bleed when you brush your teeth? That's saying, are you a gorilla? You know, um, um, or do you do you love bananas? Do you want bananas? You know, do you want the end result or the transformation? You know, um, um, uh, worried about where your next lead is coming from, you know, or, or you know, Wish you could wish you could put your marketing on autopilot. All these things are, are you a gorilla who wants a banana? Do you want a banana? 
Are you a gorilla? Yeah. So I'm saying that. Oh, sorry. And, and then the third type is the best ad of all. Are you a hungry gorilla who wants a banana? Ta -da, now do this. You know, um, I'm saying all that because really when I'm looking at the headline here at my about section, really one of the best things you can do is ask, ask a question. This basically says, are you a gorilla? Watch. Fintech? If they're not, probably not for me. But fintech? Look, looking to scale up or launch your fintech globally? I actually do SaaS companies as well. Uh, are you a SaaS startup? Want to explode on the UK market? Yeah, if you want to guarantee it, blah, blah, blah. So but that opening line is basically saying, are you a gorilla who wants a banana? Does that make sense? That's why I had to do the whole gorilla banana thing. Yeah, so you're... Your about section, which is really just, as I say, designed for somebody. It's not about you as much as it's talking to your target audience and how you can help them. And I'm going to give you a template for this in a second. Um, but um, you'll see here, are you looking to, are you looking to scale up or go for Series B funding? Do you need to show fast revenue fast and close your next funding deal? It, it if the answer to all of that is no, guess what? They're not my ideal client. They're not my gorilla. <laughs> you know, who I work with. I only work with ambitious CEOs, business owners, directors, decision makers who want to be number one. What I do, I work like, yeah. Does it, yeah. So your, I'll sum, summarize that now. Your about section is not as much a CV about you is as it's how do you help your target audience to achieve their goals? You kind of see this whole thing. Um, yeah, most people on LinkedIn, it's all about them. And the big focus shift here, the big focus shift is to make it all about who you're talking to. I'll say that again. The big focus is to make it all about who's looking at your profile. It's all about them. It's not about you. The only part of you that comes into that equation is how you help them with their problems. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to share a whole bunch of resources with you because we've only got 11 minutes left. That's what I say. I, I realized suddenly when I was going through the timings, I'm like, oh, I've got to do the foundations. I'm just giving you tactics. Um, it's going to take us this time just go through the optimizing your profile and I'm still not done. Um, but I'm going to share with you this really simple template. And even if you were just to do this, you'd be doing a million times better than you are now. So you'll see, just fill in the blanks. What do I do? I help target audience achieve whatever their top goal is, you know, um, by providing whatever the banana is, who I work with, you know, that's, you saw me doing that before. I only work with fintech subs. Um, uh, and you can do all sorts of things because you can actually start listing exactly who you work with, you know. Um, um, and this template I'm showing, which I, I haven't got my one, you can actually put testimonials in there and everything else. But this is a template for your for the about us section in your uh, a simple one, but but a, an effective one nonetheless. And actually what's really weird with it, I know that sometimes people are like, oh well, I don't want to put the headlines by putting what I do, who I who I work with, why it works, what makes us different, what others say, how, you know, how it works is a good one as well. Step by one, step by two, book a, book an appointment, free evaluation, um, ready to talk. Here's my telephone numbers. Um, just, what's weird is those headings actually give the viewer a really easy frame of reference and tell tells them exactly who you are, what you do, and how you're going to change their world. So as simple as, as template as it is, it's actually very, very effective. So um, I use a variation of it and you sort of go away and do whatever you, you, you like. But it's a good template. I'll share it with everybody. Okay, so the next section, the next section that's vitally important is the featured section. The featured section. Um, uh, I don't see enough people making use of it. it it's other than the, the banner at the top and the headline, the first thing some, somebody sees. The featured section it, it is huge and big, and you can add, I can't remember exactly how many you can add, but basically, these are your sort of capture devices. So basically, as far as featured sections, if you don't already have one, you would go here, add profile, and deep under here, under recommended, it's all hidden away, you see, unfortunately, uh, you would find under recommended, but you would say add featured. Mine's already there. Um, so because mine's already here, I'll just step back one. 
So just repeat that. So you go to add profile section. I'll just do it again. Um, it's hiding under recommended and it will be there add featured. Yeah. OK, um, so just being very clear on what that is because <laughs> it's hidden away. But then uh, once that section is there, you'll ultimately just go to add one and you can add a post. You can add a newsletter for a newsletter sign up. You can add a, an article. You can add a link or you can add media. Um, if I was to. So these ones at the moment, these go through to I mean, that was the actual webinar that we're doing, uh, which led to a landing page with the capture device which is a great opportunity for me to pivot back into the actual PowerPoint itself. So as I say, you'll go add to profile section, as I just showed you, um, and it'll be hiding under recommended. Um, now it's at this point, this was what I was saying, you remember in the beginning of the webinar where I said, there's no point me teaching you a whole bunch of t tactics, sales navigator and how to find people and stalk people and, <laughs> and, and the right process for approaching through LinkedIn. If you don't have these fundamentals in, place. So the thing I want to talk about now is really just the flow. So all we're ever doing is really going out into a vertical, out into a channel, and we are um, pulling them into our funnel. Yeah. And our funnel, our goal should always be to capture leads, to capture leads. Then we have multiple touch points, start remarketing to them, email marketing to them, socially surround them in order to convert the sale and deliver and satisfy. So everything that we're talking about with LinkedIn is actually just about attracting traffic and driving them into the funnel. Um, so when I was just showing you on my LinkedIn profile, where it was for the LinkedIn, that's going to a page where there's an opt-in form. And so this is like a really good example of some sort of free giveaway, some sort of guide, you want to be driving people from your profile into the top of the funnel. So in this example, it's like a, an ebook giveaway, you know, download your free copy here, give me your name and email. Um, so that's the whole point. And I'm going to wrap it up at this point because this has really ended up being the fundamentals or the foundations. Look, there's lots of ways of drive, driving traffic into the funnel. LinkedIn is just one of them. It's just one of the ones in social. So it wouldn't matter if you're doing the same process in Facebook, um, running YouTube ads, remarketing ads, you're always driving people into the funnel um, and then you're going to follow up with them in the CRM. So I think that's where I'm actually going to pause it nearly um, because I'll just show you this about the funnel. You know, traditional marketing is this is called account based marketing ABM. We flip the script. Traditional marketing, you know, we attract people to our site, then get them to fill in forms, then we nurture them with automated emails and socially surround them. And, you know, out of that, you know, all these ones we're driving into the funnel, we identify our target companies. What we do with LinkedIn, account-based marketing, ABM, instead, we start, this, this is what we'll be doing in the webinar too, we identify our ideal gorillas, our silverbacks, and then we're going to engage them with personalized campaigns. This is what I'll be teaching you in the second half um, using Sales Navigator and the stalking tool that it is and, and uh, the correct engagement sequence. Because right now, I'll tell you right now, it is a connect and pitch, connect and pitch, connect and pitch. Does not work, does not work. So I'm going to teach you how to do this effectively on LinkedIn. Um, ultimately, it's yeah. So <laughs> I did find target companies, engaging them with personalized campaigns so that we can build long lasting relationships that lead to new opportunities. The reality is I spend most of my time on LinkedIn with old customers liking, sharing their stuff, um, very involved, very relationship based um, marketing in the sense that, um, you know, once they're a customer, they're a customer for life. And um, true story, um, Codop last week, what did they say? It was, it's their best month ever you know, um, and how doing this sort of stuff. So, okay, so I promised you if you stayed to the end, um, a free giveaway, as it were. So let me just escape here so you can see me again. Um, I promised you if you stayed till the very end, I would uh, have an awesome gift for you. So what we have is a very, very special offer just before the second LinkedIn seminar in December. Um, what I'd like to offer you, 
I've, I've told you everything that FinTech Circle does in the beginning of the webinar, but for anybody, Suzanne Chisty has given me permission, for anybody who joins FinTech Circle, and it's only 65 quid a month, I spend way more than that just on my email marketing software. Um, and remember, you get the webinars and you get all the promotion, 216,000, everything else. So I'm not going to sell in FinTech Circle again, but you get all that reach, exposure, and access to the private um, parties and everything else. Here's a special offer. For anybody who joins uh, uh, FinTech Circle at just £65 a month, between now and Christmas, what we'll do is I'll give you a free one-to-one, -one, takes about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, a free, let's go through your profile, optimize it, create your graphics in Canva, nail your sales message. So I'm offering a free one-to-one -one session to pimp your profile um, for anybody who joins FinTech Circle between now and Christmas. So if you'd like to take uh, advantage of that offer, either contact me through LinkedIn or just join and say, hey, I was on the webinar. Um, I'd like to take advantage of that very special offer, Glenn. So I'll be onboarding all new members um, between now and Christmas as well. So I will know when you say it, I will know what it's all about. <laughs> so there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was our Whistle Stop Tour part one of the LinkedIn Masterclass. Like I say, if I just jump straight into uh, Sales Navigator and the tactics of, of LinkedIn without having all this foundational um, getting your messaging right, who to target, channeling them into the funnel, optimizing your profile, making sure your, your banner space reads effectively, getting your capture devices in the front. Um, it would be all pointless because we'd just be achieving nothing. So like I say, well, I've taught you how to set up the funnel and I'm going to share uh, the entire presentation. So you've got it as well as uh, those templates for the fill in your profile um, links to Canva and all those sorts of things. All right. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very, very much for your time and hope to see you soon in FinTech Circle. Take care. Bye.